of Fincy version 3. Christmas has come early and I've got Santa Claus here modified by a filter brush. This is a new feature of Affinity 3. And I'm gonna show you in this video how to use this. This is for PC as well as Mac. So let's just start right at the beginning. Here's Father Christmas, and I wanna apply effects just to a particular part of the body, maybe the face or maybe the arms. And the effect that I'm gonna be using is the halftone effect here. You can see this in the context. But where is the filter brush tool itself? It's over here in the pixel. So we've got Pixel Studio. Go down here and filter brush. Now there's a lot of filters. I find it actually slightly confusing to see which one is which, but here's the filter brush tool. There's some options and I'm not gonna go through those in this video, but there are some additional features. Okay, so with that selected, now I can use the settings here. And this is halftone, color and darken. That's what's gonna be applied this time and it's gonna use 460 as the brush size. So let's just apply it. So I'm just gonna apply it to the face. You can see the effect applied there to the face. And that's it. That's the filter brush. Now, of course, there's a lot more to it than that. And I'm gonna go and show you a few more options and things you can do. There are a few things that are slightly glitchy and slightly odd. I'm not saying it's perfect. Hopefully these will be fixed in Affinity version 3.1 or whatever. Now you've got this layer and this layer is exactly the same as if you go up here to pixel and go down here to not the filters, not filters, but down here to new live filter layer. And you've got here all the various ones, distort colors and halftone. There's the one I'm using, halftone. All it does, it just adds that and you've got the mask and the mask is just the brush stroke you're applying. Now it's set to white. So maybe you decide, you know what? I don't want the the full effect here. I can go over here and I can make it gray. So I'm just gonna put it gray about half and I can apply it. And you can see it's a more subtle effect, very slight, whereas the previous one when it was white was a full on effect. Now I can reduce that gray and gray all the way down and it makes it fainter. And if I put it to black, let's just apply it again like that. And you can see I can get rid of it. So you can go from white to black. Now this works really well with one layer, one effect layer. But you can create multiple layers and I'm gonna show you that in a few minutes. But unfortunately, once you get to three or four layers, I've noticed it slightly goes wrong. You can't edit the work in the same way. You can edit it at this level, maybe a couple of layers seems to be fine, but with four or five, it seems to bounce up to the top. It doesn't seem to, allow you to edit the layers particularly easy. I have not found any way of doing it. There may be a way, but it does seem to be slightly quirky behavior. And there are a few areas where it does seem to have slight oddity, but still, let's just apply another layer. And how to create that? You just go down here and you can just change, say the half tone, maybe to something else here, or you can just change this. Say you go for monochrome. And now I apply monochrome. So let's just apply the monochrome and you can see applied there. Now it's obviously using the black there. I don't want that, I want white. So that's the key thing. If you change it to black, then it's not gonna show anything. So put it to white, needs white to actually be applied. And you can see there, or gray, etc. And you can see now I've got the effect there. I've got two layers now and I could have 10 or 15 or 20. But as mentioned, the more you have, it seems to have a slight glitch with the fact that you can't edit it later. It just keeps putting it to the top. I do not know why. Okay. At the moment, you can see I'm using a particular brush stroke. You can change a brush stroke. You don't have to go with this and this is the brushes. Find all the brushes, you can go to window, general brushes and colors. So these panels, brushes and colors are here. And you can just change it. So instead of using that one, let's just go for something else. Sprays. Now, not all these work particularly well. Some, for some weird reason, do not. And you can see a preview. You can see there as I move around, a little preview pops up. So let's just apply it. And now as you apply it, you can see the splatter create a slightly different sort of design. And I can still use exactly the same layer. It, I haven't changed these settings here. As long as I don't touch those, doesn't matter. If I change this, doesn't matter either, it ignores it. 
That only is used for the next time it creates another layer, this one here. Okay, so I can just modify this, but I can always, of course, go here to the edit filter with this selected, click here, edit filter, and now I can say, oh, you know what? I want a bigger cell size. And I can change the screen angle and so on. So you can see I can create some interesting combination of effects there. I can also modify the different things here, maybe go for color or maybe go for line within this. Again, any change within the actual panel will not create a new layer and close. But as soon as I change it here or here, it will create a new layer. So let's just do that again. Let's go for circle this time. And I'm just going to add a bit of circle effect. And you can see now I've got the circular, but again, it's using the brush here. I've got this slightly more splatter brush effect and it's applied on top of the existing one. So you can multiple layers, you can have line effects on top of circle effects, etc., on top of blur effects and much, much more. But each time it creates a new layer. But if I say I want to edit this one and go and edit it, see what I mean? It bounces back now. After about two or three, it seems just to bounce up to the top and create this here. It's not ideal. So if I go down there and click there, it creates a new one. Seems to be slightly quirky behavior, but still there may be a way around this. Please let me know in the comments below. It'd be really nice to know. Right, we got that effect. You got this brush. I'm just going to go back to a more sort of visible brush, something like a dynamic India ink brush. You can use any of them. Again, doesn't matter changing the brush there. The actual effect is applied just to the existing layer here. Now, there are lots and lots of effects, not just these halftone effects. So I'm just going to change it and I'm going to go for glitch. So glitch, now it will create a new layer. So glitch, I'm just going to apply it. And you can see the glitch effect there applied. You can see a lovely color effect there. Now, it will use its current settings, whatever they are, but you can modify that. You've got the quantization there, you've got that, and you've also got edit filter. You can also edit it over here by double clicking or clicking this over here. I think it's easy just to edit filter. So just click here and you get the live glitch and then you can modify the thing. Now that doesn't create a new layer, anything like that. You can also modify the settings there. You can also go for say shred instead or unchanged there, and you can see that one, or aberration. And you can also mod it, modify the starting, the origin point, I should say, of that effect. And again, blend mode, normal, and so on. So you can change all those. You've got all these layers. Of course, at any point, if you want, you can rasterize it, all merge it into a single layer, and then start all over again. So you've reached a certain point. But the thing is, at the moment, it's all live on this layer. So any point you can go to any of these and you can tweak it. You can also go to a few of the things like here to these. If you right click, you've got options here to edit filter, refine mask, release filter, clear mask. You can do all those sorts of things as well. Those are available, but the actual changing of the brush strokes applied to it does seem to have a slight weird quirky feature. Okay, what you can also do is Go down here, you've got an add filter. That seems to crash. I have had a few tries with it. Sometimes it works. It puts a new layer above everything else, which seems very odd. Sometimes it just crashes the system. Well, not the system, obviously Affinity, Affinity 3. So I don't particularly use add filter. So if you're going to use it, I would suggest save the file, save your work, so you've got your work, and then use the add filter. You may have no problems with it, but I've had a few issues with that. Okay, so you've got this glitch effect, all these things, I'm just gonna remove these. So you can just remove them at any time. You can just go and delete the layers, so they don't have to be there. So you might say, you know what, I really don't want those. I can then just simply just go over there and continue now with a new one. Let's just go for, again, glitch. I'm just gonna go for, Shred again, and now apply the effects there. And again, you can see now with the brush, I can change the brush size. That doesn't create a new layer or anything, so I can just make the brush size a bit bigger. And you can see then old Santa and the halftone effect are all slightly shredded. I can then go and edit it. So if I decide, you know what? I don't want the shred. I want maybe scramble or 
fuzz. You have to set the glitch strength so you can act, to actually see it, so you can see you get a sort of like noisy effect, creates a weird effect up there. You've also got preserve alpha and so on, so you can see that gives a bit of change. You can merge all those sorts of things. So if you want to, you can always merge it, delete it as well, and close. So you've got that effect. You've got all these effects here. Not every effect, unfortunately, is included here. So you can see the list has got about 20, I would say. There's a fair amount. Diffuse, add noise, etc. So you can add noise to a particular localized area. I think that's pretty cool. And Voronoi, let's just go with that. And again, you can see the Voronoi effect applied there. Again, you can have it localized, something like that. And again, you can edit the filter. So click there, edit the filter, cell size like that to create some interesting combinations. of the game. You can change the blend mode, multiply, maybe like that one, something like that, and close that. Now, what you can also do, you've got here layer, uh, pixel, I should say, pixel, still learning all the different ones, pixel, and go down to new layer filter layer. You've still got all the effects as before. If you use this, what happens, it will create an effect layer on top. Let's just show you. That's easier. Gaussian blur is applied on top. Does that a bit like the add filter feature, and you can change that. You can see that's applied to the whole thing. Now, the thing is, the filter brush is just a local effect, but you can also do very simply add that and I'm just can delete that now. But I was also just going to point out pixel, new light filter, colors, and procedural texture. Unfortunately, probably the most powerful filter in Affinity version 3, unfortunately, is not in the list down there. I do not know why procedural texture was left off, but it's the one filter I think should be in this. It just seems odd that it's just been excluded. But that, I think, is a fair run through, certainly initial run through, of the new filter brush in Affinity version 3. Have you used it yet? Have you found any things that you find slightly odd about it? Any things that you would love to see added to the filter? It'd be really interesting to know anything you've found as well.